One of the most difficult things about playing Dungeons and Dragons can actually be really getting into character and remembering that you only know what your character actually knows. And by that I mean, of course, that you shouldn't really be acting on information that that your rogue party member gathers while he's off exploring some fortified encampment off in the distance unless they have some way of communicating that information back to you. If you don't, then you have no idea what's happening. So with that in mind, today's video, we are going to be discussing metagaming or the idea that you should really be only uh, being influenced by and acting on information that you actually have in character. Before we continue, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help significantly. And let me know what types of content you guys are interested in seeing. But with that out of the way, let's just get on into the details here. So when I say that you only know what your character knows, that does actually refer to a really, really broad spectrum of things. You have elements of your background or your race or your class, your lineage. There are so many different aspects that you can draw and pull influences from to be able to obtain information. What it doesn't mean, though, is that you can't be bringing in outside information that maybe you glean from a different campaign, or maybe you know from watching some other D&D live streams, or like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you don't know bits and pieces of information that were, were gathered by other members of your party unless you were actually there or had some other method of communication that allowed that information to be delivered to you. That said, but in regard to that last point, when you are overhearing information, not only do I think it's natural, but I think it's actually encouraged, I think it's for the better, to actually think about that. Ponder what would happen when you do find out this information sort of organically in game. What would your reactions be? What would you do? What would you not do? Is there somewhere that this would kind of lead you off into your own natural story progression? Or is this kind of just a throwaway moment? It doesn't really uh, matter too much to the, to the overall campaign. And that's kind of where the tricky balancing act comes into place. I do think it's really important to, to think about these things and ponder all these different possibilities, but it's really trying to refrain from actually acting on them and doing anything. That's kind of where you enter into the territory of what's known as metagaming, and that's kind of where the problems can arise. The reason that metagaming kind of seems like a problem is because, to a really large extent, it, it completely destroys a lot of immersion in the game. It really eliminates the entire purpose of why is that rogue kind of going off to dis discover some information. It eliminates an entire swath of spells that are really used for, for communication, for delivering information uh, in these particular circumstances. So trying to get around this idea of metagaming, this idea of using external knowledge, is actually really, really core and fundamental to the, the proper functioning of the entire game itself. So what can we really do to avoid it? How can we get around it? Well, in my games, there's something that I really like that a couple of my players do. What they'll do sometimes is they'll ask, would I know X based on Y? So they'll ask me something like, would I know this information about vampires based on my background as a architect? So they're not just jumping in and acting on this information that they might hear or they, that they might kind of know in the background, but it formulates it into a question and makes it, again, part of that whole collaborative experience that Dungeons & Dragons should be. The person, the individual playing the character, is aware of something sort of external to the game, and they're trying to figure out a way to incorporate that knowledge into the game without actually fundamentally breaking it. I think it's really important that when you ask that question, you do have some kind of justification. Would you know this information based on your background, on your class, on your race, on your subclass, on interactions that you've had in the past? Is there some way that you can actually realistically and reasonably justify knowing this information? And then it's kind of on the DM to, to come up with a response to that. Maybe they'll just say, no, you, you have no way of actually knowing it. Or maybe they'll say, yes, this is the extent of the information that you actually know about this topic. And that will also kind of cut off some aspects that maybe you do know that you shouldn't really know in character. Or maybe there's a third option of actually just asking you to roll for it. Maybe you do actually have some kind of tangential relation to it, but it doesn't really fit perfectly. So they'll maybe ask you to, to make an insight check or make a history check or make an intelligence check. All of these are different methods of trying to incorporate that external knowledge to make the player feel valuable, to make the player feel powerful and, and involved and engaged, but without kind of sucking the life out of, of, of everyone else in the group. From the perspective of the DM also, there are some things that you can do to try and kind of mitigate or to alleviate some of the, the, the burden of, of metagaming by your players. One of the absolute simplest things you can do, and it's very, very commonly done, is adjusting stat blocks of enemies. This is obviously more specific to combat scenarios, though it can have some implications for roleplay as well, but specifically in combat scenarios, if you know that your party member has come up against vampires 57 times and they know all of their resistances or vulnerabilities, 
maybe you make this vampire a little bit different. Maybe you change their AC a little bit. Maybe you change some of those vulnerabilities. Maybe they spent a ton of time at surface level mingling on the various streets and they've kind of overcome that sunlight sensitivity. This is a great way to kind of make subtle adjustments and changes to the game that actually keep your party guessing, keep them thinking about things that they might not otherwise be doing. Another great thing you can do as a DM is just having this dialogue with your players between sessions or before your, your campaign even starts, have a good discussion with them. Find out what their visions are for their characters. What types of things would they logically know? And you can kind of build your game around that. So when they ask, what I know about this, you can very confidently say, yes, you would. And you don't even need to necessarily offer a role because the character just knows the information. Or you can kind of go the complete opposite end of the direction and just come up with something that they would have absolutely no way of knowing with the exception of metagaming. And that way you can really, again, you can really cut off that, that information gap to really, really emphasize the, 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 the power of the growth and the development of their specific character within the confines of the campaign itself. All right, guys, so that's been it for this video. Metagaming or this use of external knowledge is a really complicated topic and can be really, really difficult to try to, to keep in that right headspace. But if you did enjoy it, please let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like and also remember to subscribe to the channel. It does sincerely help and I appreciate absolutely every single one of them. Otherwise, that's it. Take care.